Thank you for joining us today. We're really excited to share clarity with you and we can't wait to take you through this video. Now, of course, you can watch this at your own leisure, but if you have any questions or you want to get in touch with us and to go through this in person, feel free to get in touch with us. The details will be below this video. So please do get in touch, but sit back, enjoy, and we're going to take you through the clarity journey today. So I'm joined by uh, myself, of course, but with Ainsley, the founder of Clarity. So Ainsley, would you want to give a quick introduction to yourself? Yeah, thanks, Steve. Um, I got into accounting, I suppose, when I was uh, fr from a, an early age. Um, my dad left the corporate world, um, set up his own small business, and the change in family dynamics was quite dramatic and quite obvious very early on. He struggled, as all small business owners do, with their numbers, with understanding the difference between profit and cash and cash flow management, and then all the usual things that pull you into small business, like keeping customers happy and keeping the team happy and so on. Now, he was really, really lucky in that he had a great friend who was an accountant, and he spent so much time with him, probably not charged him enough or at all, um, and spent a lot of time with him and made a dramatic difference to, to his business and to our lives. And that was really evident. And when I grew up, that's who I wanted to be, that accountant that made a difference to small business owners and to the lives of, of, of their, their team and, and their families. Now, I, I left KPMG and I joined a regional accounting firm in the UK. We were very early adopters of cloud technology, have tried every piece of kit out there. And I took that firm from compliance only to niche business advisory over a period of about 10 years. And I sold that firm at the end of 2018 to Crow because we had had numerous discussions together and we thought we could do something very, very exciting with Clarity and wanted to concentrate on Clarity. So that's, that's the move from accounting. Now, Looking back, I created a bit of a monster at our accounting firm. I took a big four consulting methodology, delivered it to small businesses. It was time intensive. It was ad hoc. It bespoke. It required senior team to deliver and effectively necessarily became expensive uh, to deliver. And so therefore, it was a, only our better clients or those clients that were really looking to grow and looking to spend money from, uh, from a business advisory perspective that took advantage of those business advisory services. And you and I both knew there had to be a better way. There were so many more small business owners that were looking for help uh, from accountants. And we needed to find a way to create a repeatable, scalable solution that delivered more business advisory, getting more of the team involved at a price point that more small, small business owners would take advantage of. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you for sharing, Ains. But before we jump into uh, the platform and go through that process, just have a quick intro to myself as well. So like Ainsley, I'm a chartered accountant. I've been in the profession for over 20 years. And you know, it was really important for me growing up through the profession to help business owners. I think that's what's, what's really stuck me as a, a person growing up. Again, my, I'm a, a multi-generational uh, business owner. Uh, so it, it's been really important to be able to get that help. And I, I love numbers, loved business and wanted to help much more small business owners do that. So I actually ended up leaving a firm where I trained, uh, where I had the opportunity, a good regional firm where I had the opportunity to become partner, to set up my own firm to do exactly that. But like, like Ainsley created a monster effectively. It was reliant on me predominantly and a couple in the team to deliver this stuff. And it was really hard to get the right people in. And then we couldn't service as many clients as we wanted to uh, going it on, along that route. So I sold my firm uh, a good few years ago now and focused on being a consultant to being more hands on. But then, as Ainsley said, we got together uh, not that long ago, a couple of years ago, to really help accountants and small business owners effectively becoming the bridge between the two to help deliver more business advisory services and repeatable business advisory services at that for the accounting firm. But ultimately, then helping business owners understand the numbers and then make better decisions. Because we all know once they understand them, they can make better decisions and then they can see the results and then make more decisions and so on. So that's a brief introduction to us. But before Again, before we jump into the, the platform, Ains, I think it's probably a good idea for us just to set the scene in terms of the challenges that accountants face within the profession, particularly around business advisory services. So... Um, you know, what, what is it that you've seen like through your experience and from all of the thousands of accountants that we've been speaking with over the last couple of years that, that comes up most? 
Well, you know, I had a discussion with the team just today, so it's very fresh in my mind, the issues and challenges that they were talking about. So, um, I mean, this is a, quite an easy one and it's it's really uh, unusual. I know we probably know this and we talk about it when we talk to our small business clients about, you know, businesses are unique, but they suffer the same challenges. Well, it seems to be the challenges facing accountants on business advisory are pretty much consistent across the board. And we, we hear the same things time and time again. And one of them is structure. So not having the structure to deliver business advisory and, and not having the, the processes built around that structure so again it's that ad hoc uh, delivery it requires experience to be able to put that together because there is no structure and then are no processes built around it i think the biggest challenge though that i hear over and over and over again is that clients don't get it they don't get advisory they don't understand how am i going to explain the value to my small business clients how am i going to get them to pay more than they're already paying because they reluctantly or you know, are not keen on paying for compliance services. So how am I going to now introduce a new service that I'm going to be asking them for more money for? So will clients get it? Will they want to pay for it? And I think that builds on to the the uh, other big challenge that we see in all businesses, not just accountants, it's a lack of time. We don't have the time to do this. Um, that's something you frequently hear. We're overwhelmed in compliance. We couldn't possibly do anything extra because we just don't have the time or we don't have the resources. You know, the talent force is struggling to get people in and recruit the right people to be able to do added value work. So I think those are uh, common across many. We also hear things like, uh, I'm not sure my team have the confidence to do this. They don't have the experience and they don't really have the confidence. And I think that probably goes back to the structures and processes. And I think the last one is a little bit of fear. So it's kind of that elephant in the room, that fear of the unknown, the fear of doing something different, the fear of maybe not being the expert that you think you are in business advisory or, or maybe the client not thinking that you're as good as you should be. The fear of, you know, clients saying, why are you doing this now? Why haven't you done it before? Fear of asking for more money. So there's a lot around that fear that we need to um, help accountants overcome. And um, that's a, I think that's a, a good one to, 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 to see how we power through that today because everything that we've built, you and I together, and it's not just the platform, it's the education that we built around it, it's the implementation programs, it's the go-to-market strategy that we've built, it's the ongoing member success team and the structures that we've put in place around that to help accountants overcome all these challenges because we've been there, so we get it, and I think we know how to help people overcome those challenges. Absolutely. And something else that, that comes up every now and again that I hear certainly is that selling is hard or that people shy away. There's a fear around selling as an example, but you know, we'll certainly go through that end to end process on the, the video today and dispel some of those challenges and build confidence and so on as we go through. So uh, we'll, we'll bring them out as we go through together. So Ains, we're sharing the screen now. Uh, this is what we call the Clarity River. And uh, you can see on the screen, it says the complete end-to-end -end advisory engine for your firm. So very much like uh, your uh, software of choice for accounts production. Let's just pick Iris as an example. That's what I used to use in my accounting firm. So Iris used to prepare the accounts and the tax returns in our accounting firm. Uh, and so that was the engine for compliance effectively. So in the same way, we're looking at Clarity as being the, the engine for your uh, business repeatable biz, uh, business advisory services for your accounting firm as well. So Ains, why, why don't you take us through this process? Uh, just, to, I mean, it's fairly self-explanatory, but just to, so make sure that we're all on the same page and then we can jump into the platform. Fantastic. I think just getting back to that other point you made just before we switched here, which was about selling, it's also important to bear in mind that professional services are bought, not sold. If we can share the value and help our clients understand the value, they will buy. This isn't a question of us having to sell. So we don't need to feel under pressure to be salespeople or, oh my goodness, I don't know how to sell. How am I going to sell? If we can bring our clients and help them understand the value, then they will buy. So I think it's important. Professional services are bought, not sold. Absolutely. Right. Into the complete end-to-end -end advisory uh, engine for your firm. So as Steve said, this is kind of like, this isn't an app that you resell. You will never resell Clarity. You might sell Clarity the word and the expression and the mindset, but you won't sell clarity the product. Never, it's, it's not a reselling product. If like Iris, you wouldn't sell us like Iris instead of accounts, you are not going to be selling uh, on clarity to your clients. This is your engine for your advisory function for your firm. 
And it's also important to realize it's not just the software, as I explained. The software is pretty uh, logical for an accountant, easy to get your head under it and to understand. The education programs that we built around Clarity are more about mindset. They're more about how to speak to a small business owner, what they're looking for, how to engage them with a great conversation, how to get them to understand the value and say, yes, they want to work with you. And our member success team as well aren't just there to help you understand the program on this platform, because again, it's quite logical. They're there to one, help you implement. So hit the ground running, start making an ROI. And many do that within 30 days. So it's about getting that quick, those quick wins, getting over those hurdles, building confidence within the team and in the structures and in the processes and building stories to be able to tell more clients. Our member success team are also there on an ongoing basis to create a plan with you and not just for implementing, but for scaling as well, built around your firm, your uh, revenue ideals and targets and objectives around the team and the resources that you've got available to you and to be able to create that cadence that you and they can work together to be able to achieve what you want to set out uh, for your added value and advisory function. So within Clarity, we can do all of this as you suggested. So it's about helping you identify those clients within your organization to start those conversations with. It effectively creates a batting order for you. And it'll identify probably those clients that will need more senior people within the organization to have conversations or whether more junior people can carry on those assignments. So it's a great way to be able to identify quickly clients to have that conversation with. And then it's about connecting. And as I said, we've created that whole go-to-market strategy. We have packaged, productized service lines, shown you how to market them, shown you how to put them together, how to contact clients to be able to discuss them, price them for you. And that's not so that it's a structure that you have to do this. It's a, so that you can hit the ground running. You are, of course, and Clarity enables you to customize all of those things within the platform. So you can add your own uh, flair. You can add your own services. You can add your own IP to this. But it's not about you have to do it the Clarity way. It's about, though, hitting the ground running and being able to certainly put in place and get that ROI quickly. We also help you engage with clients in a really visual, exciting way, a way that small business owners that get excited about, a way that helps them understand not only the value and the potential in their organization and their business, but what you as an accountant can do to help them and why you're different from everybody else and why you can have a massive impact on them. And our whole education goes around how to have that great meeting to get the client to say yes. We've also got a complete delivery, me delivery mechanism within Clarity, so how to deliver uh, advisory in totality. You can, of course, connect Clarity to other apps that might be helpful for those more bespoke or more uh, sophisticated clients where they might need more additional reporting and fancy board packs, for example, or more uh, customized dashboards that they can measure and monitor specific KPIs. But in reality, for 80%, 90% of your clients, Clarity is going to do all of the advisory function for you. So you will not need to go outside Clarity for the bulk of your clients and for the work that you're doing with the bulk of your clients. And finally, within Clarity, you can manage the whole process as well. So it enables you to understand who on the team is doing what, where we are, what stages with each client. And it also gives the team the confidence and the ability to deliver those service lines without scope creep on time and within those uh, delivery uh, mechanisms that we have created and anticipated for you including agenda systems and service plans. And it's been likened to, so we hear from our accountant members and, and non-members in the profession as well from all, all over the world. They say to us, my gosh, Clarity is just like business advisory in a box. It literally is plug and play. So it gives you everything that you need to be able to get started. And as Ainsley said, as you continue, you can then customize that for you as, as much as the platform is customizable as possible for you to be able to get to where you want to get to. So it gives you everything that you need to get the team involved because let's face it, in most accounting firms, generally, you know, the top leaders in the firm are delivering business advisory services to the top clients, say tw top 20%, which may well have some structure, but maybe could involve more of the team. You know, that's often what we hear. We want more structure to get more of the team involved to free up my time as a leader. And so that's for the existing clients getting advisory. Then for the clients in our client base that aren't getting anything we want a way to be able to demonstrate value and then the team deliver that to them at price points they can afford and then finally for prospective clients we want a way to be able to demonstrate to them that we're different but then also getting them onto these types of services from the get-go so 
we'll go through that process and it's going to apply to each of those three situations as we go through. So do think of those in mind and what's relevant for you as we go through the session today. Ains. Right, Dean. So we, when we talk about uh, the service lines that we've created for you, effectively, we've built them off the five levels of business advisory. So we've broken advisory down into more than just one level. When we hear people think of advisory, they think, oh, I'm not a management consultant. I'm not a business guru. I couldn't possibly get involved in business advisory. Well, there's so much more to business advisory than just that. And in fact, many firms may not offer that top level, that bespoke level, that really in-depth, uh, you know, ad hoc service. They may just focus on the more customizable, the, the, uh, the systemizable advisory beneath that. And effectively, we can also see that more of the team can get involved now. And it's about a stepping stone. So it's creating that funnel for business advisory, giving each of your clients a level of advisory that's suitable for their size and for their sophistication and where they are in their life cycle of business. Now, the two most popular service lines that our accounting members are selling to their small business clients are accountability and planning. And it's really important that we, I suppose, don't understate uh, this, that we really get you to understand that planning has become by far the most popular line by a country mile. And effectively, this starts at, uh, we suggest a minimum price point of £457 or 10% of the profit improvement. Clarity enables you to value price. So it really does make value pricing so, so easy now. With, with that service line, £457 a month, so that subscription advisory offering. Um, what we're seeing here is that it takes 17 to 20 hours to deliver per annum, and that's generating a minimum recovery rate of £322 an hour. We are seeing on average that our accountants with 17 clients are generating £100,000 sterling. So you can adjust these for your currency because they pretty much work in the US, Canada, uh, South Africa, Australia, New Zealand, uh, really, really translate very, very well. So just use your currency if you're in another jurisdiction to, to apply this. But 17 clients generating 100K of really, really profitable revenue. And we're also seeing that if uh, an accounting uh, firm puts one person dedicated to delivering clarity business advisory services, one client, one so one accounting firm member can generate circa 350 to 450 thousand pounds of revenue. So that's one person, revenue per employee, we're looking at quite a high number, can generate that level, supported, of course, from an administrative perspective. But that is huge uh, profitable revenue for the firm and a great way for the firm to be able to drive forward. Now, it's not just about profit for the firm. It's also about helping your clients too. But but we are you know, we know firms are looking to, to win those talent wars and delivering a more meaningful work for your team is one of those things to be able to retain and, and recruit great talent as well. Now, all of what can be delivered with for planning is included within the Clarity platform, and we will go through this in detail. But in simple terms, it's about helping co-create an action plan with your client. And it's really important here because small business owners don't get their numbers. And if we give them a plan that is based on numbers, so a typical three-way, uh, forecast, projections, whatever you use from a, a financial planning perspective, if we give them a plan of numbers, clients really struggle to understand what they need to do to make those numbers come true or to make that plan come true more accurately. So with Clarity, it's about building an action plan first. From there, we can build a financial plan at the click of a button within the platform. We can check that instantly from a cash flow perspective. And then with our service maps and pro forma agendas, we can help the team deliver monthly a service level through you know, meeting those clients on a monthly basis, holding them to account and helping them achieve their targets and their business objectives, effectively keeping a score. The accountability service line is also a standalone service line. It's not offered by many of our members, but it is one of the more popular of the other service lines. And again, it's probably for our smaller clients where we're giving a less in-depth service line, taking fewer hours, but also at a lower expected recovery rate. Steve. Perfect. Thank you, Anson. And you can see on the screen there what we're doing is you know, based on that profit improvement. And you'll see that within the platform. It's very clear to the client. And here lies 
you know, getting rid of some of those challenges, not being able to show the value to clients. We'll share with you in a moment what that looks like. We've grouped the services. And these are the two most popular that we suggest you start with. Uh, and then potentially you can drop sell down to accountability or say drop sell. You know, as we talked about earlier, you're not really selling, the, the client's buying. And the opportunity there is if, if the planning isn't within their realms of affordability, then you can at least get them started with accountability. A, a, a very low price and very much like how our member success team hold uh, the firm or, or your team accountable for the progress they're making uh, with helping their clients and with repeatable business advisory services. Uh, our, our team will do that too, but it's hugely, hugely undervalued service, I believe, accountability. It's so, so powerful. And you know, I think it's really the secret source to success in any, you know, not just in business, but in life, to be honest, having that person behind you with a stick because uh, we all need a, a whack every now and again because uh, sometimes the carrot isn't enough uh, so that keeps us moving forward but uh, yeah Ains, thank you for that that's absolutely now, now and, to, and to be clear these are the prices you will charge your clients these aren't the fees for clarity per client this is what you would charge your client for delivering a planning service sometimes people get a little caught up in the detail so just to reiterate 457 pounds monthly subscription service level for you to deliver to your clients and that's the price you would charge them now of course you can charge a lot more depending on the profit improvement and we'll see how you can do that when we get into the platform Brilliant. Well, now's the time to dive in, I think, eh? So let's work. We're going to go through that river so that we, we talked about before. We're going to refer back to that. We're going to refer back to the challenges. And thank you for your patience because you're chomping at the bit, I'm sure, to see the platform. So let's jump in. Okay. The first screen that you see is what we call portfolio view. So this is all of your clients all in one place, regardless of however they're connected. So whether that's zero, whether that's QuickBooks Online, whether that's Sage Accounting, or whether it's manual entry. So that data for those three uh, software, book, online bookkeeping platforms are refreshed every single day, very quick to set up as well, but equally so is manual entry. It takes about five minutes to do two uh, financial years in the platform uh, and it instantly, so for prospects, that's brilliant, but also for those clients that aren't yet on cloud, uh, it's brilliant for them to be able to still partake in this journey. It's important that they don't get overlooked. So as you can see on the platform, we've got, a summary effectively of the key seven key numbers that, that are going on in those businesses right now and we can sort we can segment we can filter and we can benchmark to see what's going on with, with uh, those particular clients so 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 powerful to have all of that all in one place in addition to that you can see over here on the left hand side we have the firm data tags so here you can create your own firm data tags I've got client grade because we advocate grading your clients, the service level, or maybe the annual fee in here, and then the manager or department. So you can add this content in here to help further understand what's going on with your client base. And interestingly, it's helpful seeing sometimes what managers are looking after which clients. Uh, so some, they may have too many D's and E's potentially, and that could be a reason why that they're not doing so well uh, with their targets rather than anything else that's going on. So just uh, some further insight there. Now, it's these seven key numbers, we'll go through them in a little bit more detail in a moment, but they're probably familiar for most of you uh, watching right now. And the interesting thing is that it's looking holistically at the business. Uh, but we'll go into those in a little bit more detail when we share the seven key number screen for a particular client. Now, within portfolio view, what you can do as well is improve the key numbers over here on the right hand side. So if I move this slider or enter a percentage over here, we can see that the numbers change slightly and it now shows the improved seven key numbers. So again, I can sort and see what the businesses that have the, the biggest revenue or the biggest potential as an example, uh, and also those potentially that have the biggest cash gap. Uh, or the ones that are doing the best from a cash perspective. So you can really start to see what's going on from a positive and a negative perspective. So you can proactively contact those clients. And equally, you can see those clients that have the biggest potential. So those that have the biggest potential for profit and cash improvement uh, for what's going on in their business right now, if they were able to make those small changes in those key areas, that's what it would look like. So as you can probably tell that we're using marginal gain theory here, making small adjustments in lots of areas, and that makes a big impact. So we're able to then show the clients what their figures actually look like. 
I'm jumping ahead of myself. We'll go through that data in a moment. Um, Ains, anything else that you want to add from a portfolio view perspective? Yeah, I mean, I think one of the key things here is that the, the larger the profit improvement, the more senior the member of the team that will need to have that conversation with that client. So, for example, in that case where we've got that 586k improvement, it, oh, sorry, that 1.4 million, then that would obviously probably be a partner that was going to lead that conversation. Uh, we could have uh, other members of the team having those other conversations as we go down through. And it's very easy to, to bank that and learn quickly within the accounting firm who's capable of having those conversations. So not only does it create an order for those that we want to contact first, it also allows us to get some insight in advance of who should be having that meeting and potentially what service lines we might want to offer or suggest and what pricing we might want to charge that client before we even get to see them. So good planning in advance. Yeah, absolutely. And the other point to add here, in addition to understanding that preparation, uh, you know, who's going to speak to that particular client on the other end, once the client is in the process, you can also keep a track of how they're going and you know, getting on with their tasks, but also how the numbers are improving as well. So that's the, the first element really of identifying the clients. You know, the first section of the river, we talked about identification. So we do have a, a, a step process that member success go through with you to identify clients. They're certainly for the low hanging fruit and also what you can do it has part of the year end process as well with the accounts prep. Um, then there's this approach that you can leverage all of the data here to be able to, to cherry pick who you need to speak to next. So that's a fantastic way of identifying the clients to speak to. The next stage, if you remember on the river was connecting. And what we can actually do from within portfolio view actually is connect with a client. So let's just say for argument's sake, we're going to pick, let's pick, um, Let's pick my demo company here as an example. So Steve's Avengers, I've ticked the box next to my name, and then I'm going to improve the key numbers here over on the left, right-hand side. So that's 5%, for example. And what I'm gonna be able to do then is from the actions menu, download a, an initial report, we call it, within the platform, uh, and download that PDF. And the reason for doing that is to enable to get a meeting booked in with the client. And you'll see that this report, so you can include your logo or not, you can change the, the, uh, the template that you use. We're just gonna be using the existing one for now. But what that will actually do is very quickly share with the clients, we open that up, what the potential is for their profit and cash that they're leaving on the table. Now, most business owners are high level visual people, not all of them, but the majority are. So this first page or first half page grabs their attention. And whether they're skeptical or not, they will most likely want to have the meeting with you to understand where, you know, where, where this could possibly come from and what they need to do to get it. For the, those business owners that aren't that way inclined, they like a little bit more detail or you know, they, they want to go in, into the numbers a little bit more specifically. And we can see here that we've got a, a general understanding of how we've got to those numbers. Again, all of this is editable within the, the platform. We then go into each of those five different levers of success that are, you know, come out of the seven key numbers. It explains each one, how much contributes from that key number, uh, from that lever, and then some potential actions for them to get on with immediately should they want to. Making the report truly proactive so that the client didn't ask you for it. You've, you've, gone, you've gone out of your way to send it to them and you've been thinking about them behind the scenes, it shows them what money they're potentially leaving on the table. So it's valuable to them as well as stuff that they can get on with immediately. So it's helpful too. But the, really what we want them to do is to book a meeting. And then what we suggest you do is send this email so that this report out via email, or you may like to do a, a video. That's something that Member Success will help you with in terms of what how best to do that for your accounting firm. But you get, you get the idea, an initial report to whet their appetite, to be a bit of a teaser, so to speak, so that they can then uh, understand what's going on you know, in their business and see where they could potentially get to. Now, that's one way of connecting with your clients. We'll share with you another way that you can do that for more sophisticated clients later, but we're gonna go through uh, the standard process with you right now. Ains, is there anything else that you want to add in terms of connecting with clients and uh, any advice maybe at this point in time? Yeah, I think it's important to talk about the conversion rates from sending out reports to meetings. So we're seeing really that probably if it's done by email alone, it's generating maybe a 50% response rate from what we can see from the data that we've got. 
With follow-up, that can be increased to 60 and 70%. If that's done by video straight off the bat, then it tends to have an 80% conversion rate. And if when we're in a meeting with a client, say just take five minutes to say, can I just show you something? I'd like to book in a meeting with you to go through it in more detail. And then do this visually with the client, then we're seeing that to be almost 100% conversion. Now, if you think, oh, where's he getting all these numbers from? I, I, I just had a debrief with, with a large accounting firm uh, yesterday, and they're on a trial. They put 20 clients on the platform. They sent out 11 reports and booked in nine meetings. So that shows you the, the level of response rates that we're seeing for small businesses because they are looking for this sort of service and it's very clear it's very simple what we're asking them we're telling them we've loved them we've crunched their numbers we've seen a potential uh, that they're leaving on the table we'd love to have a meeting to discuss it as a business owner you would be probably bonkers not to trust your numbers person and want to say yes i'd love to see you let's let's chat even if i think it might be i might be slightly skeptical i'm going to say yes can i please come and have a chat with you to go through the where you're getting those numbers from and what num my numbers might actually be yeah, and uh, another interesting point around this is that, uh, as you can imagine, because it's plug-in play, it's, it's business advisory in a box, we have the templates to be able to help you get this out. So whether that's using video, whether you're using email, if you want a script for a follow-up call, we've, got, we've thought of all of that and we've built it all for you and the team so that you can get on with that as well. So yeah, fantastic conversion rates there, absolutely. And, and so, so important uh, to get out to your clients and a member success team will help you choose who the best ones are to start with as well. Okay, so that's the connection piece. So now let's say that client that we've spoken with wants to then have a meeting. Now, if I choose that company again, we get them into the meeting. If I move my videos over to the top, what you are able to do is take them through this journey. So this is a nice visual way for you to take the client through. Uh, and in a moment, actually, what I'm going to do is share with you the agenda in terms of what you can send out to the client beforehand. But, but let me just show you this, because this is the precursor to the whole process that you're going to go through with the client, is you're going to show them where they are now with their business using those seven key numbers. So they've probably never seen their business in that simplified view before. And now, now, as we hear often, is that they, oh, I, I actually get my numbers. I understand it now. Everything's so clear. So you'll be able to take the clients through that process and help them understand where they could or should get to with their business, finding something that's between a stretch and realistic. Throughout that process, they'll start to understand the shifts that are required. And your questioning, again, within our systems and processes, will help you and the team ask the right questions to help lift the lid on certain things. And then you'll be able to create a plan, a very simplified one to start with, just to help them get started for the first one to three months, potentially. Uh, and then you know, maybe even something for them to go away and work on if they don't want any help immediately. But again, we'll come to that as we go through the process. There are lots of other uh, different plans that you can create within the platform. And again, we'll show you what that looks like shortly. And then the ongoing measuring and monitoring the results versus the plan to make sure that they're on track. And then if they're not on track, ask them the questions that to be able to get them thinking the right things and get them back on track. Now, business owners, they always know the information or they can go away and look it up. Absolutely. They just haven't had the time and space to stop and think and they may not know the right questions to ask. So we don't need to be the experts here. So you and your team, when you're going through this process, it very much is a mantra that our members have adopted, which is more questions, less advice. It really is going through that process of asking the client the questions, getting them to be part of that creation process with you, and then providing the information that you can then, with your expertise and your team's expertise on numbers, really be able to interpret what's going on for that business owner and take them through that journey. So that essentially is a visual representation which you can use for the client as you go through that. What you will actually do before the meeting. So let me open this in a new window actually so we can jump around because we'll probably jump around between it as we go through the process. I've opened up one of our workflows. This is the service map for the Clarity Planning Service that we saw on the slide earlier, that 457 pound a month service minimum. Uh, and that's the team delivering it by the way, uh, for your firm delivering that service to the client. So you can see here as a broken down what, what you need to do every single month, what the team needs to do every single month. We'll come back to this, so please don't get too hung up on the service map. What I want to share with you is this month zero. This is when you have a clarity meeting, and clarity meeting in the sense that you're bringing clarity to the client, so getting them to be able to understand what's going on in their business and where they could be getting to. So 
that um, that's the, where the word clarity comes in. But you can see what we've done here is broken down the agenda into steps and we put times, recommended times on here and the maximum times. The reason we've put the timings on here is that some of our members were spending potentially up to three hours, I think I've heard, the, ma the maximum mains. Don't know if you've heard any more than that. It's not a record that you want to be, trust me. Um, you're giving away free advice, basically, over three hours. And that's stuff that the client would have been willing to pay for. Uh, so we've, we've put the time limits on here so you can see really a nice prompt 50-minute meeting. Appreciate the beginning. It's going to take slightly longer. But a nice prompt 50-minute meeting to take the client through exactly what they need to go through, being respectful of their time as well as yours, doing what is, what's necessary but in the shortest amount of time, and, and taking them through seven key numbers. Yeah, so where are you now? Where could you get to? Just using slightly different language here, so the levers of success. Stopping before you get into the plan section, asking questions. So that's where you know, understanding the shifts and getting more emotional connection with the client and uh, what that means for them. And we'll go through that in a moment. Creating a simple action plan to help them get started. The three agreed priorities and one for the firm ideally as well. Uh, and then going through the next steps. So you can see that, that these are the recommended amounts of times to go through. And if we click on the link here, what it will actually do is take us into generating an agenda for that meeting. So if I just leave the dates and times as they are for now and download that. What we then be able to see is that a PDF of that agenda that we can send out to the client two days before, essentially, again, doing the same thing that we've just gone through. Where are you now? Understand your plans for the future. Are you, where can you get to? Going through the profit and cash improvement and you know, again, looking at that, what that means to them, then creating the action plan with them and then going through their priorities. And then again, asking them some questions, what their key takeaways were from the meeting and anything that they need help on. So this is the client version. You can see at the bottom, it's got that end time. So it's clear and it's essential so they can see what's going on and when they need to stop, when you need to stop as well. We also have the team use first version of this as well. And just to give you a quick glimpse of what that looks like, it's exactly the same agenda, the same seven points, but we've got more information in here. So for the team to prepare the questions that they know that they need to ask, uh, effectively getting them ready for, for that meeting. Uh, but it is very simple step-by-step -step process. And we've had people say to us that they muddled their way through the meeting and still were able to help their clients and get onto a, a, a planning service level as well. So that's what's going to happen. You're going to send the agenda out to the client, generally speaking, two days before. And then you're going to show this to them, as we just ex explained, and then go through to where they are now. Now, this area you're going to spend five minutes on. It's really a stick in the sand, to be honest. This is really all we want to do is show the client their numbers in a way that they haven't seen before. So we're looking at, the, from our perspective, our language, the P&L, the balance sheet, the cash statement, and efficiency. But with their language, you can see at the top of the screen here, it's what those things measure. So their position, their performance, their efficiency, and cash. So we're looking holistically at the business, making it simple so there's only seven numbers that they need to understand. And then we've got the greens telling us the good things and the reds telling us the bad. And any questions that the clients have here, we can then refer back to in the, the next screen of, in terms of how we can, where they could or should get to. So we can always answer those questions as we go through because we, we can't do much about these numbers. It's historic, can't change it, but we can going forward in terms of what the business wants to be able to do. And if they do have any questions specifically about where the numbers are, or, and also to help build the confidence of the team, you can see where the numbers of how they're calculated, what numbers they're using. And just, just to make sure that we are all on the same page, let's just take zero as an example. If you connect your account to zero uh, for this particular client, the numbers that are in zero, as long as the balance sheet balance is there, it's going to balance here in clarity as well. So these numbers are going to be exactly the same as we have in zero. So we can see here complete transparency and understanding and a little bit of trend analysis as well. So great for building the team's confidence and understanding where the numbers are coming from. You have little question marks here too that go off to help sections to explain more as well. But really setting the scene and a stick in the sand to say to the client, right, this is where we are. Let's look to see where we can get to. Okay. So once that's done, 
We can jump back into the show journey screen and say to the client, great, that's going to look to see where we should get to. And then here, effectively, this is where that marginal gains theory comes in. Playing or sensitivity analysis, if you want to look at it that way, playing with the numbers to be able to help the client get to where they want to get to. Now, we're going to, we're going to whiz through this. If you want a more detailed uh, review of this, then please do get in touch. We may well have some other videos to help as well. We'll put those in the links at the bottom too. But effectively, the process here is asking the client the questions in relation to each of these five levers. So we have revenue here. We can see that the client had 70% revenue growth last year. If the client had 70% revenue growth again this year, it would have an extra 72K. So we can ask the client, is that possible? So they'll tell us yes or no, or give us an indication. Maybe they'll say we'll be lucky to get 5%. Or maybe they'll say, yes, absolutely, it's possible. Or maybe they'll say that, you know, we've got a target of 450K this year. And we can see where those numbers have gone. We've got the, the impact that will have on profit and cash. And you're going to go through each of those numbers in turn. And just as an example, on the previous screen, we saw that gross profit was down four points. We can then use that, put those numbers to ask questions to the client. So if we get back to where you were, that's an extra 18K of profit and cash. Is that possible? So really, it's just a case of using the numbers to create a script, if you like, or a story, the boundaries of the story, and get the client to say yes or no or tweak things a little bit. The whole point, as we said, is somewhere between a stretch and realistic and finding somewhere in between for the client where they feel comfortable. Ains, anything you'd like to add on when we're going through the, this screen? No, I, th I think it's just important that we, I, I suppose, get the clients to stretch them a little bit, but not so far that they feel it's unbelievable. You know, when you go to a conference and everybody says, stand up and reach as high as you can, and everybody reaches high, and then they say, just that little bit more, and everybody can seem to do that little bit more. That's what we're trying to do here with the client. Just get that little bit more. We don't want them to stretch them too far, though, if they feel it's unbelievable. And you might find that the client will say things like, I don't know, Ainsley, what do you think I could do? And, you know, we, we try not to get into that size type of conversation because we want the client to be thinking about what's possible. But if the client's stuck and in order to move it forward, it's easy to say, well, anybody can do one, two, three, four, five percent. So that's the benchmark. So what over five do you think is possible? And that would be my retort to, I have no idea what do you think. Yeah, absolutely. It's also important that when we do this with our accountants, because we create plans for our accountants and we show them the combining effects and the magic of percentages combined together and what that can do, our accountants go, oh my God, I never realized that. So our, our small business owners always tend to have the same reaction. They will look at that number and go, oh my goodness, didn't realize that was possible. So it is a real eye-opener for the clients. And again, this is where we probably spend a good chunk of time. And it's a fact 10 minutes on this number, this 96, 93K. Sorry, I've got the glare facing me. So the screen's a bit hard to read. That, that sounds bad, isn't it? Me glasses. That 90, 93, 94K on the screen. So we're going to be trying to get our clients to understand, is, do they want this number? Do they believe it? Do they think it's achievable? And more importantly, what would they spend that money on? So... What would that 90K, where would they spend that in the business? Would it be new plants and equipment? What would that do to the business? Would it make it more efficient? Would they generate more revenue? Would that create more profitable uh, bottom line numbers? Would they spend it on team? Would that increase the efficiency? So we want to understand what they would spend that money on and what impacts that would have, both from a business, but also from a personal as well. So finding out the driver from behind the business. What would you spend that money on personally if you were able to take this out of the business? What would that do? To your family what would that do to their lives as well so that we can really understand the motivation for the business owner behind their business and this is a really interesting point actually and it's for us to stop and to come back to some of those challenges because you can see at the top of the screen here we have a clear demonstration of value for the client that they can clearly see on the screen what the potential profit and cash is that they're leaving on the table so that starts to answer that question around clients not seeing the value the process that we've been through as well to get to this is placed to our strengths as accountants. So it's using numbers, which we tend to love, and process, again, which we quite like as accountants. So it, it plays to our strengths. So we're going through this in a way that fits our skill set and therefore will build confidence and makes it easier for the team to be able to have these types of conversations. And they're not having to give advice. They're asking questions. 
as we talked about earlier, our members have that mantra, less advice, more questions. They don't need to give anything. And remember, this is this meeting is the initial meeting, you know, that initial clarity meeting. There shouldn't be any advice given here anyway. We want to wait before the client to so give advice before the, the, the client's behind the paywall, so to speak. And once they're actually paying for your services, then any advice can be given. But as you may well find going through the journey, you may not need to actually give any advice because it really is just bringing things to the fore for the client. In, in marketing, Steve, as well, giving your clients a quantifiable value proposition is goals. Whether that's clients or prospects, a quantifiable value proposition. If you can tell your clients what it means in their back pockets for, for doing business with you, that's goals. Very little. It's very rare that we can are able to do that. So for you and your prospects to be able to say a statement like, our average clients grow by 6.7% per annum. If we were to do that for you, this is what it would mean for you to become a client of our firm. It's a very different conversation than trying to say, well, we can do accounts really, really well, and we'll help you with your dividends and your remuneration, and we'll help you with an R&D tax credit or similar. This is about what we can do to help you achieve your dreams and your goals. And it's a, it's a completely different proposition entirely and sets you apart from many other accountants out there. And for clients, it's showing them clearly why they'd want to get involved with you. And, and we'll show you next, giving them a taster of the types of things you can do to help them get towards this 93K. And that's, again, instead of selling them and flogging the management reporting, which they think, why do I want management reporting? What's it going to do for me? How is it going to help me? How are KPI dashboards and projections going to help me? Well, here we can show them 93,000 pounds is what's at stake here. Let's now look at how we can help you get there. Absolutely. Thank you, Ains. And we're going through that structure, as, as we talked about earlier, which is the number one challenge that accountants speak to us about. We're, go we're going through that as, you sp as we speak. And the client is experiencing that too, so that they feel that they're already experiencing what it's like to work with you ongoing. We're going to come back to the Creative Business Improvement Report later. I want to share that with you afterwards, if that's okay, as we go through this process. Uh, as Ainsley said, the most important thing is getting that connection, asking those questions that we've built within our systems and processes for you to get the client understanding that they want this, it's achievable, and you know, they're, they're emotionally connected to these numbers going forward. It's not just a number. From here, this is where you then create that action plan with them and then go through their priorities. So again, it's a simplified one that we're going to create using our template. Again, you can create your own if you want to, uh, and you can create your own for different uh, sectors and for what you know if you want to create a more detailed strategic plan within the platform you can do that too but we want to do something just to get the client started for the first month or so so with all of those five levers we're going to go through some tasks that are pre-populated and ask them whether they're relevant or not in this particular section of creating the action plan and you can see on here on the left hand side there's another area for how we can help that's how your firm can help the clients where effectively you can create your brochure in the form of tasks and we'll look see what that looks like in a moment once we've done the task sorting and i'll show you what that looks like shortly clients love doing this by the way and it's another element of co-creation you know, similar to what we just did with the numbers because they're co you're co-creating with the clients they're more invested and more invested in the outcomes so it makes it more likely for them to take action uh, also once we've done this task sorting we're going to go through prioritization and then we're going to assign who's going to do what by when so again very quickly we're going to look at looking at taking these casts and dropping them either into the yes or the no pile, depending on what the client says, whether they're relevant for them right now. And they're, they're pretty standard things in here, but often the things that get overlooked. So the, the simple but powerful things, as we often get told uh, with not just these tasks, but how the whole clarity process is put together uh, and helping the client get these things done, where that's where the secret source, the accountability comes in. But as I mentioned, you can add your own in terms of your own deck to start with, or if there's something the client says on the fly, you can add it here as well and then drag it over to the, the yes column. But just to quickly whiz through here and we're on the screen that we've got a reminder of what's at stake and a reminder of the value for them as well. And then when we get to the how we can help section, we've got details here. Now, effectively, what we would normally call a budget. So if, if, as Ainsley mentioned, if you try selling a budget to a client, they're just going to either look at you really confused or ask you how much it is and say, no, thank you. But if we put it in a, a, a slightly different way, uh, and as we have on the tasks here, is create a 12-month financial plan to break the business goals into monthly targets, i.e. we're speaking business owner talk rather than accountant talk, that's more likely to be interested or at least understand what it actually means. So you know, you've got the whole, whole opportunity to add 
uh, your other services along here in the form of tasks. Uh, so we'll put a couple in here just so you can see what that looks like. So that's the, the task sorting. We then go into the prioritization canvas. And from here, we're going to take each one in turn and ask the client which one's the priority. I'm going to do it quickly just so that we can go through this process with you. And once that's done, they can reorder here. Ideally, just a, a note on this, we just want three for them. They might fill all seven, but you ideally just want to get down to three uh, and then one for the firm so that you can talk to them about that ongoing as well. We click the finish button and we go through into the action plan. We have a reminder here of what the planned additional profit is. I've already have an image loaded here already. So initially it would be blank, but this is the things that you can add here for your client or they can send to you for you to add in terms of what they've already told you what it would mean to them if they were able to achieve this. So they've got that visual reminder of what's going on. But what we wanna do here is assign who's gonna do this particular task and when they're gonna do it. And then once that's been, once we've gone through all of these tasks, even the one for yourself, you know, when would you like us to have a look at that for you? And, and raise an extra work order. You're then gonna scroll again back to the top of the screen. And Ains, you have a fantastic way of positioning this. And I don't wanna steal your thunder in terms of, of, of what you say or what you recommend that our members should say when asking the client about this number. So we've gone through the whole process with the clients and then it's the sales process, if you wanna call it that, is one question in reality, because we've gone through we've gone through the buying mentality and demonstrating value already. So Ains. It's important that we don't go through all tasks here, by the way, that we only focus on the priorities. As Steve said, they're not behind the paywall at this stage. So we just want to focus on the priorities. So I just want you to leave here hitting the ground running. So by the time you next meet me, you've done these things that are important to help you get towards the 23K. So that's focusing just on these priorities. All tasks are there. And of course you can give cli the clients access here to be able to tick off their own tasks if you want to. I wouldn't because it gives great control at, the, at each meeting to see what the priorities were, what they should have done, what they didn't do, why they didn't do it. So again, it gives you that control at the meeting to be able to, to see what was happening. Now, at this stage, I would be saying to the client, and it's very simple, it's no rocket science behind this, we would love to work with you to help you get this additional £94,000. How does that sound? It's important at that point that you zip it, because as accountants, we're, we're keen to, we don't like the selling, so we try and fill gaps, and, and by filling in gaps, we talk ourselves into or out of certain things. So we just want to Throw it out there. We'd love to work with you to help you get that 94K. How does that sound? Zip it. The client is then likely to say one of two things. One is, what does that entail? So in this instance, we're going to say, this is the planning. We would recommend our planning service for this level of profit improvement. In that planning service, next month, we'll build out a really detailed action plan with you. So we'll take this current work that we've done, flesh it out with you, build it into much more detail so that you know what you're doing each month to hit towards this 93K. Then we're going to build a financial plan so that we can understand the numbers behind the plan and breaking it down into those 12 month targets. We know whether those they're working and the actions are working on a monthly basis. So we can help you interpret the numbers and understand whether the actions are driving the intended results or not. And then we can discuss together what you want to do about that. We're gonna check that from a cash flow perspective. And then on a monthly basis, we're gonna meet you to hold you accountable. Accountability is the secret sauce. Studies in the US show that business owners with written goals who are held accountable achieve 78% more. World-class athletes don't have coaches to help them kick, hit, throw the ball better. They have coaches to keep them focused, to keep them on track, and to help them to take the next step towards their goal. So this is about helping you make sure you're doing the right things to hit this 93K. How does that sound? And the client's gonna say, well, that sounds interesting, Ainsley. Uh, how much is that gonna cost? In this example, we're gonna say that that's gonna cost you 900 pounds a month for our planning service. And the client is either going to go, oh my God, that's great value, 900 pounds for 90,000 pounds of additional profit. I'm gonna snap their hand off before they change their mind. Or they might be very price sensitive and say to you, you're kidding, that sounds like a lot of money. And we've got training and education for the team and an objection crusher for them to help them understand whether this is a value issue. So whether the client doesn't genuinely understand the value or whether it's down to an affordability issue. And if it's affordability, we will offer them another service line, which will go along the lines of, well, in that case, you know, I understand it's a big jump. However, it will help you get to that 93K faster. However, 
if you'd like to take advantage of our insights package, that'll be £450 a month. How does that sound? And then they're likely to say, well, what does that include? And then we'll tell them why it's different from the planning service line. And then they're going to go, yes or no. Actually, I want to go back up to that planning because I now understand the value. Or they might say, actually, that's still too expensive and we can offer our insights and our accountability, sorry, our accountability service line. So it is helpful to have at least one or two backups that you can be able to, as Steve said, do a downsell to, but it's at least showing the client that they can have something else which won't get them there as fast, but will help them too. We don't really see clients with too much of an objection. Generally, they're looking at this going, I want this, when can we get started? As we were saying, the, the things that we hear from the business owners, from, from our accounting members, is that they've never seen their numbers this way before. Now They now understand them. They now have the clarity that they need to get to where they want to get to. And because they've got that emotional connection with the number, it's not just a number in the uh, anymore, which they, they may not even understand or may not like, because that's how our most business owners are. You know, they... Uh, they that feel like it's all fit together and they, they're now on a track to be able to achieve what they set out to achieve in the first place. So it's hugely powerful going through that process. So that's the engage process that we were talking about on the river, taking the client all the way through, you know, understanding you know, where they are now, where they could get to, understanding the shifts that are required to get there, creating that simple plan to help them get going. Now, some clients may say no. You can send them the priorities. You can download the at Triarty Action Plan and get that across to them. But do book in another meeting. And our systems and processes explain how to do that because they probably won't have completed those tasks. Uh, so then you, even if a client says no, there's still always an opportunity for accountability later on down the line. But that's how we you are able to, you and the team, get the clients engaged. Uh, the next step is we're talking about delivery. So if the client says yes and they want to, to move forward with this, uh, we're going to look at how you can actually deliver that. Before I do that, I want to share with you very quickly, going back into the future screen, that business improvement report. What you're able to do is download this report after that meeting that you've had with the client. So either they've said yes or they're not sure, or even if they said no, you can still send this report over to the client, one to either help get rid of buyer's remorse but, or, and also to help them understand why they should be working with you and you'll see that it goes into a little bit more detail compared to that initial report, because again, that initial report is just a teaser. And then what we're explaining here, so again, the numbers are, uh, you know, this may seem familiar to you from the initial report, but it's the specific numbers that we've created as going through in the meeting and an understanding of where, you know, where those numbers have come from and a bit of a, a introduction to the report, going through evaluation of where the business is now, where it could be if they achieve that a bit of explanation of that. Again, a reminder of their current position with the seven key numbers. And then looking at their business potential, seeing where they could get to and where that's actually coming from. And then effectively testing, stress testing their business model based on the information that you've got from them and you've been through with the client. So they can see potentially whether they need any funding at this point in time uh, before you even get into a cash flow sense check and that they have something that they can continue to grow with their business. But you can see here, there's lots of questioning here as well. Getting the client to uh, can feed back to you, and then you can so, you know, top and tail this with whatever content you want, fully customizable as well. So that's something that you can send to the clients after the meeting. But for those clients that are slightly more sophisticated, you may like to send that instead of the initial report when getting the meeting booked in. Okay. Now let's jump in to what that delivery actually looks like. So let's say that they signed up to Clarity Planning as an example, that £900 a month for the firm. Month one, as Ainsley said, you're going to go through the action plan with them again and break those tasks into smaller tasks or then go through a more detailed action plan with them uh, for, the, for the months ahead uh, uh, to be able to help them achieve that 93k. 94k of extra profit. You may also do a tax review. You know, so entirely up to you. It's something that we suggest because that may well, you know, a questionnaire if you already have one, because that may well flesh out some additional tax services that you can offer to the client in addition to what you're currently doing and raise additional extra work orders there. Month two is that financial plan and the cash flow sense check. And just to show you what that looks like, if we click on the financial plan, what we can actually do 
is create that within seconds. So on the screen here, we have the information. Again, let's take zero as an example, all of the accounts from zero. So we can see exactly what the client needs to do here to achieve their targets. We can minimize it too, to make it easier to look at if that's, if that's easier for the team and for the clients too. You can sense check it and edit the numbers. And in the same way that you can play with the numbers in Zero Budget Manager, we've got you know actually more functionality here with the numbers too for you to be able to do that. So with normally within 30 minutes, the team have a good financial plan or a good budget for the next 12 months for the, the client to be able to use as targets to move forwards. Lots of different options here for you to be able to create this too. From there, we're then able to create that cash flow sense check and we'll be able to see if at any point in time, so the business model may be sound, it'd be cash gener generative, but based on the opening cash position and the plan that we have in place, do we have a challenge in terms of what's going to happen? Now, with this particular business here, we can see that they have a big outgoing in June. Uh, if we if we get, hit the plus button, we can see that they've got a big tax bill, to, a historic tax bill to clear. And maybe if they were able to put on a time to pay agreement on here or pay that in installments, that would be able to minimize that. But potentially, you know, they may need some additional funding because we can see that further on, you know, the, the position actually starts to improve in some places. Um, and again, in March, it goes it goes ne negative again. So it gives us an opportunity to see what's going on. One, whether cash flow forecast is actually needed, the more detailed one. And then you can show this to the client and explain so they understand why. So it makes it easier to be able to serve clients with cash flow forecasts, but also with your funding services as well. And we've built funding plans into the Clarity platform as well for you to be able to get all of the relevant questions, all of the relevant information and ask the relevant questions, the team more importantly to do that fact find for you, then to be able to deliver that service as well. And similarly with the financial plan, these numbers you can, some of them you can edit them in very much the same way to be able to have a play uh, and, and go forward from there. So that's month two and the system pretty much does all of the heavy lifting within seconds for you. You just spend, you know, I say half an hour to an hour going through that, uh, those two elements. You know, we put an hour to two hours here to be safe. And then in month three, what you're going to be doing is looking at the reviewing their actions from the previous action plan, holding the client accountable, and effectively going through the numbers, comparing the actual to the plan, and asking the client very simply, why are those numbers different and what are we going to do about it? And the way that the system helps you identify those questions to ask is by going into the perform financial performance review. And here we're going to be doing that comparison effectively. And this is where we are for the month of July. This is where we are for the year to date. Or we can do this for the quarter as well and then ask the client the questions. And again, we can break these down by individual line. And the system analyzes as well the biggest positives and the biggest negatives for, for you and the team to look at too. So the technology does the heavy lifting like it should. And we have the systems and processes in place for you to follow to make that happen. And then it's rich, literally just rinse and repeat from there. In the months in between, you're going to be having accountability calls. Then you're going to be delivering that same thing again as you did in month three, month six and nine. And then effectively doing a recap of what you did at the beginning at, towards the end of the, the, the 12 months. Uh, so it's an, a nice rhythm for you and the team to follow. It doesn't take a lot of time, as I easily alluded to, you know, up to 20 hours per year per client. And it's hugely profitable for the accounting firm, enjoyable for the team member as well, following this process. And it actually helps the client. And we know from our own experience, and I'm sure you do too, by getting the client to focus on something and then ask them questions about it and getting them to tweak what it is that they actually do in their business to get the numbers that they want, they will make progress. You know, regardless, there's no real secret, you know, recipe or, or magic pixie dust that it's, it really is that simple to be able to help clients is get giving them the right focus and interpreting the numbers for them and helping them keep score effectively and they will be able to move forwards at the bottom of the screen here I have a reminder of what it is that you and the, the, the team bring to the clients speaking business owners language if it's needed but you can see here it's pretty comprehensive along again we've got agendas to be able to deliver this we have agendas for compliance services too within the platform for you to be able to give that delivery uh, and help the client get that goal uh, that they, they're working towards. Uh, and, and that you do the same with your accounting firm and the team as well, more importantly.
Ains, anything else you'd like to add in terms of deliverables? No, no, absolutely. I think I think most people say, oh, they're blown away by the level of the, the depth behind clarity, that it's much more in depth than they realized and that actually it's quite complete and it does pretty much everything that you would need an advisory offering to do for, from an accounting firm's perspective. You've thought of everything. That's kind of what people say. So there is a lot in here. We've given you a lot in a very short space of time. I think the important thing is to show you what's possible with clarity to show you the potential revenue that you can achieve for your accounting firm to show you how easy it is to get the team involved to show you how easy and simple it is to get the client on board for them to understand the value building confidence with it in the team the structures and processes are there to make sure that everything is repeatable and scalable and also it's taking away that fear really in addition to our education and training to be able to make sure that people aren't afraid to roll out advisory to get going with it and to be able to package and price it and to be able to deliver it too. So it is that complete solution. Clearly, we've gone through this very fast, but if you do have any questions, do get in touch. I think the last thing that we want to show you is that ability to, uh, I think, manage that whole process from a deal flow perspective. We call it deal flow. Effectively, we've built Strello within Clarity. So from portfolio view, you can see which clients you want to contact. You'll be able to, for example, the, the process that we've got here and we've mapped out is data checked, report sent, call followed up, meeting booked, and out to proposal given. You can edit much of this. You can drag and drop the order as well. You don't have to follow what we think the order of your advisory pipeline needs to be. And there's automation built in here. So if you do uh, create an action plan, or if you do send out a report, we can see what the potential profit of cash is. And at each stage, there's different information required for the card uh, appropriate to the stage that it's at. So it's very easy to keep a track broken down by deal owner or broken down by the data tags and the firm to be able to even filter down this, this pipeline to be able to see what's happening in each area. You can, of course, create your own custom boards as well. And perhaps you might want a custom board for all your planning clients to understand who is in what month and who needs to be moved to the next level. But again, a lot of flexibility built in to be able to help you manage your advisory pipeline. And we've also built a funding board for you too. There we go. And the most successful accountants are the ones that use Clarity on, on themselves as well. So they're able to bring that into their own firm and help the firm move forward and give themselves that plan and check the, the actuals to the plan each quarter as well. So as you know, Clarity isn't just a platform. The platform does the heavy lifting. So we do have a fantastically experienced member success team that help, as Ainsley mentioned earlier at the top of the call, not just from implementation, we also help from accountability perspective and helping the team and the firm get to where they want to get to so you can help the clients do the same. And we have plenty of education as well. So online, self-paced. Uh, we have online events regularly uh, as, well, as well as in-person workshops and events as well. So where we have everything to be able to support uh, you and your team to be able to deliver more repeatable business advisory services to more clients uh, and create that win-win situation for everybody involved. Fantastic. So we look forward to answering any questions you might have. We look forward to taking the next step with you that's appropriate for where you are in your journey with us and the team at Clarity. And I hope to see you soon.